Discovering the Stars. It is night. High above, tiny points of light sparkle in the dark sky. There are thousands and thousands of lights. Each one is a star. At first, every star looks the same. But if you look closely, you'll see that some stars look bigger than others, and some stars shine more brightly than others. Stars look small, but they are not. Stars are really huge, much bigger than the Earth. How much bigger? Picture a beach ball and a grain of sand. The beach ball is a star. The grain of sand is the Earth. Stars are different from the Earth in another way. The Earth is solid. We can walk on it, build houses on it, grow plants on it. Stars are not solid. Stars are great balls of gas that burn all the time. As they burn, they give off light and heat. At night, we can see the light of the stars, but we cannot feel the heat. That is because the stars are so far away. We do feel the heat from one star, our sun. The sun is 93 million miles, or almost 149 million kilometers away from Earth. That's a long way, but it's much closer than any other star. If we were not so close to the sun, the Earth would be dark and frozen. Nothing could live on it. It takes eight minutes for light to travel from the sun to Earth. The light from most other stars takes hundreds, thousands, even millions of years to reach us. During the day, where do the stars go? We can't see them, but they are still in the sky. The bright sunlight makes it hard to see the other stars. How many stars are there? Billions and billions. We don't know exactly. We can't count them all, and new ones are forming all the time. Our sun is part of a large group of stars called a galaxy. Our galaxy is called the Milky Way. The Milky Way looks as if a giant spilled a pail of milk into the night, and every drop of milk is a star. There are many galaxies in space, and each one is made up of billions of stars. One of the galaxies nearest to the Milky Way is the Andromeda Nebula, but it is still very far away. A message from Earth to a planet in the Andromeda Nebula would take two million years to get there. When we look at the night sky. The stars seem to twinkle, but stars do not really twinkle. They only seem to because of moving air. As soon as astronauts go into space, they leave Earth's dust-filled air behind. The sky they see is very clear. The stars do not twinkle. They gleam as brightly as diamonds. Ever since people have lived on Earth, they have used stars in many ways. The star they have used the most is the sun. The sun gives us light and warmth. It gives our planet the four seasons and helps everything to live and grow. Many years ago, people learned to use the sun to tell time. They did this by placing a stick in the ground and watching the shadow made by the sun upon the stick. As the day passed, the shadow moved around the stick. People learned to tell the time by looking at the position of the shadow. How did people of the past tell time at night? Before there were clocks, people could tell time by reading the night sky. 
They did this by picking out a group of stars that seemed to make a picture. These star pictures are called constellations. There are about 90 constellations in the sky. Long ago, people made up stories about the constellations. One story is about a mighty hunter named Orion. When he died, the gods placed him in the sky. You can see him there every night. He has two very bright stars for his shoulders. A row of three stars is his belt. Two more bright stars are his feet. Early at night, Orion the eastern part of the sky. Orion moves through the night sky the way the sun moves through the day sky. The sun sets in the west in the evening. Orion sets in the west before morning. Until clocks were invented, people used constellations like Orion to tell time at night. Stars are also used by travelers as sky maps. The star that is used most often is Polaris, the pole star. It is also called the North Star. Imagine a line through the Earth going from the South Pole to the North Pole. That line points right to the North Star. Because this star always seems to be in the same place in the sky, early voyagers used it to find their way across the sea. Thousands of years ago, the Egyptians learned how to use a star named Sirius as a calendar. Sirius is the brightest star in the sky. It is also called the Dog Star because it is part of a group of stars called the Big Dog. The Egyptians wanted to know when to open the canals that let water into their fields. The right time was just before the Nile River overflowed every year. It was the same time that Sirius was in a special place in the sky. Once every year on a night in June, the light from Sirius would shine on the jeweled eyes of a statue of a goddess. That became the signal for Egyptians to open their canals. As long as people have lived, they have made up stories about the stars. One story says that Orion, the great hunter, was killed by a scorpion. The gods placed Orion in one part of the sky, and the scorpion was placed at the other end of the sky. When one constellation rises, the other one sets. That way, the scorpion can never sting Orion again. Another story tells of Aquarius, the water carrier for the gods. He was a faithful servant. To reward him for his loyalty, the gods put him in the sky as a constellation. One constellation that's easy to find is the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper looks like a pot with a long bent handle. There are seven stars in the Big Dipper. Three of the stars make the handle, Four of the stars make the four corners of the pot. People have always watched and wondered about the stars and other shining sky travelers. One of these other lights in the sky is called a meteor or a shooting star. It is called that because it streaks through the darkness like a flaming arrow. Meteors are pieces of metal or stone that fly through space. They travel so quickly through the air that they become hot and glow. Nobody knows where meteors come from. Meteors that land on Earth are called meteorites. When a large meteorite hits the Earth, it makes a big hole called a crater. Most meteorites are very small, but some are very large. One meteorite that fell to Earth weighed 34 short tons, or 30.5 metric tons. A comet is another shining space traveler. A comet has a bright head and a long trailing tail of light. Once people believed that a comet in the sky was a sign that the world was about to end. 
Now we know that a comet is made of gases and millions of bits of dust. The glow of the tail is really sunlight shining off those many bits of dust. A comet travels around the sun, just as Earth does. We do not see comets very often. The most famous one is Halley's Comet, which passes the Earth every 76 years. Another kind of sky flyer is the asteroid. The word asteroid means star-like. But asteroids are much smaller than stars, and they are much closer to Earth. Asteroids are pieces of rock. Thousands of asteroids, both large and small, travel around our sun. Asteroids do not give off light by themselves. It is really the sun's light reflected by the asteroids that makes them seem to glow. We all enjoy the stars. With or without a telescope, we can find the Big Dipper, Orion and his scorpion, and many other constellations. Maybe we can even see the flaming arrow of a meteor or a comet shooting through the sky. The night sky is full of wonderful sights and surprises. The more we look, the more we learn about our beautiful galaxy and the countless other stars that light the sky.